Hi guys and welcome to the video. My name is Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire and this video is the first of a three-part series where basically we're going to be installing the Yale Connexus L1 Smart Lock. Um, this first video we're going to be focusing on installing it. In the next video we're basically going to be configuring it to work with uh, Samsung Smart Things and in the final video we're going to be uh, going through some of the pros and cons of this lock and finding out how smart it really is. So without further ado, we'll crack on with this uh, with the installation. If you are into this kind of video and you're looking for smart things, uh, smart device kind of news and Wi-Fi news and technology and tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and uh, click the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are uploaded. Okay, let's get on with the installation. So now we're on to the installation, um, which isn't particularly difficult. Um, the instructions are actually quite good. They've got uh, some very clear pictures on them. Just make sure that you read exactly what they're saying and they, you know, follow what, what they say. That's basically my advice on this. It's pretty simple. You don't need much in the way of equipment either. Um, basically just a screwdriver and a tape measure. Um, you can use um, like an impact driver like this, just makes things a bit quicker. Um, but really, this is all you need. It doesn't take very long. Um, I would say that most people would be able to do this. Um, as long as you sort of follow the instructions and don't overcomplicate it, it is quite simple. Um, I'll take you through it now and give you some sort of tips and tricks. You will also need your keys during this process, so make sure you've got those. Um, <coughs> so the first thing to do uh, on the door, and your door might vary slightly, but the principles will be more or less the same, is basically um, what you want to do is take take the handle off to start with. So what we're going to do is just unscrew these. I'm going to use the impact driver, which is a bit quicker. And just hold on to both sides when you do this, because it will fall when you take it off the back. And then basically, once you got that, just gently prise it off there. And take this off. You'll notice I've got the door open. That is the best thing to do, really. Um, just so you don't accidentally shut it because you will have to put this back in and, uh, and use the handle if you, uh, if you shut the door. Okay, so once you've got that bit off, the next bit is to take out the locking mechanism here. Now, as you can see on this door, there are lots and lots and lots of screws. Only take off this one. If you start taking off all the rest of these screws, you're going to get yourself in a whole world of hurt. So what I would say, it's normally going to be the one that's sort of in line with your lock. So just unscrew that. Oh. You see there, it's come out. And it should be a screw sort of about that size. It's basically just holding this lock in place. Now you see that the lock doesn't come out. It's not the fact we're taking that screw. Now, it's not necessarily that clear in the instructions, but basically what you need to do is just turn the lock. And then once you've got the key in, That'll, uh, that'll release it. Don't start, if you can't get in, don't start unscrewing all this stuff because basically all these screws are holding in the locking mechanism which makes these bits at the bottom and the top uh, all lock in together. So don't don't start unscrewing everything. If you feel like you're undoing too many screws, you probably are. Okay, so once you've got that off, we're now ready to start with the installation of the lock. Okay, so uh, now we've taken the lock off and the handle off, we're ready to install. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to get our measuring tape and we've got to measure the depth or the width of our door. And we're measuring the width and we're also measuring the halfway point. So uh, this will tell you, as you see in the instructions, which pack you're going to be using, uh, depending on the thickness of your door. Uh, and that's basically all to do with these little packs here uh, and the um, these thicknesses here and it's basically just to do with the, the thickness of your door so once you know that you're ready to crack on I know that mine is 44 millimeters or an inch and three quarters if you're in the US and um, once you've done that you can get your what's called your actuator so basically your actuator is the uh, is the locking mechanism um, and basically you're going to be putting that into the door now I only need the little thin one here because my door's not actually that it's only 44 millimeters but if your door's slightly fatty you might need to change that out for this one and just have the longer one so you just get that put that in there and you're going to slide that into the hole here and once you've done that you will use the screw so don't use the screw you used previously on your door use the screw that they supply and um, mine if i try to use my older one it would be slightly too long 
a slight too short, sorry, so this one's the perfect length. So we just screw it in, into position, and that just locks in. And you need to make sure that that's not in the locked position, but it's just, that it's just fitted like that. Okay, so once you've done that, the next stage is gonna be doing the outside of the handle uh, and getting that sorted. So, you can see on my door where I took the screws off, there were two, two sets of screws. Um, so basically we're gonna be repeat, we're gonna be using those holes again. Um, there's some flexibility on the handle on the outside. So you get these things called lugs, which basically screw in. I've already screwed this one in, um, but I'll show you the other one. And essentially they're just little things that you find in your pack, so I just, and you just screw them in. Um, there's also an option to put a third one in. I don't need that, but uh, if you did, then you can put a third one in there. Okay, so it takes a little while to get these lined up. This one can be a little bit fiddly. The other thing you need to do is put in this little white thing here, which is basically one of these. So they're in your pack and you just slide that in there. That just takes two minutes. That's, that's not gonna take long at all. And then what you wanna do is just very carefully, you'll see that there's a sheath on this cable. And just slide it all in together to get it all lined up. And that is now set on the uh, on the actual door there. And the next stage, and just hold that into position. The next stage is gonna be grabbing it inside. So this big, long, chunky thing here, which is basically gonna be your inside lock. Nope. And you wanna take this off. Just gently slide everything into place. And there you go, so now, that's now all lined up there. And now what we can do is we can get screws from whichever was your relevant pack on the base on the measurements of your door. And you can just put these into position. So, and I'll just loosely tighten them at the moment. Don't, don't make them too tight, just so they're holding everything into place a little bit. Um, you're, you're gonna have to play around with this in a minute. So just make sure that you, uh, you don't make it too tight. So that's one. Uh, I've just lost my other one. Here it is. Okay, so you get your other one, um, which is going into the bottom lug. If I can find it. That's it. There. That's it. Right. Okay. So once you've done, uh, once you've got it on, um, the next thing to do is, is to get these two sides lined up. So obviously there was some flexibility on the lug on the other side. What you want to do is just try and get these to match up on either side. So they're both parallel. And then you're going to get this little thingy and you're going to put that into position. So that will see that bit goes, sorry, just going to get this all the way around. Yeah, this bit goes on here like this. And that goes in there. And then you just want to, you want to try and get it lined up as possible, making sure that it's parallel on here. You tighten these screws, I'll just say, just be careful, don't over tighten them. Um, the lug can snap if you're not careful. Um, so just, just tighten them up, but not too tight. So, that feels about right. And we'll do this one as well. Just again, making sure that it is all straight on here. And all nice and lined up at the top as well. Mine isn't. Oh, too busy talking. I've messed that up. Come on, let's get that. Straight. I'm just loosen this one up a bit as well. Put that on there. There we go. Okay. It's all about position. So it's important to just keep an eye on it, as you saw there. And just tighten it up as well. Okay, so that's now uh, in position, um, and now we can start to put the rest of it together. So now we've put it all on, what we're going to do is we're going to get the last bit on. So this is the handle. You can see that I've already taken off the, uh, the battery housing and the uh, top bit where you put the module as well. Um, so it's all ready to go. And basically what you're going to do is you're just going to line this up. Um, but before you do that, you just need to connect this little cable that you poked through earlier. You just need to connect that on the inside there. You'll see exactly where it goes. Just plug that in. It's quite delicate, so you just have to be a bit careful. Oh. 
Yeah, and just make sure that's fully engaged. And I've just tied those cables there so they're not going to get damaged. Be a little bit careful when you're doing this bit, you don't damage the cables. Help if you have the uh, that bit off. Up with Fiddly, just making sure it's all lined up and making sure this cable isn't getting caught. And then you just slot it on like that, and that's it on. And they're on the right position, okay? Okay, so that's it on. And now, basically, what you got to do is you got to screw it into position. So, you got the little screws. Um, I'm going to connect it up here, so connect this bit, screw them up here, get the handle into position. And that's more or less that. Um, Obviously, once it's in, it's in place, then uh, you need to put the batteries in, which we'll, we'll do in a moment. And then we're going to go over a couple of other bits and modules. Okay, so next we're going to be putting in the batteries. Um, they do supply batteries, but I'm going to put some Duracell in just because um, I think that we're going to be using this door a lot and I just want it to last a bit longer. Um, so putting the Duracell batteries, make sure that you follow the exact uh, pattern that they've got on the outside here. Um, you can take that sticker off, but I'll probably just leave it in place just because you don't want to make this mistake in the future. Um, so there you are. That's the power on. Now you can put the batch pad straight back on after that. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to touch that again. Okay. Screw that back in. Flip it in. It's all in position. Okay, now next thing we're going to do is we're just going to uh, check it works. So we're just going to do the bleeps. I can't remember the bleeps off the top of my head, so I'm just going to uh, remind myself. Right, so we push down the R button. Um, in here for 15 seconds. One day. And that's the two beeps. And then what we're going to do is we're going to push down and release. And we get two beeps. And then we're going to push up and release. And we should hear that lock. Okay, so that's the lock sound. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be pairing it with a key or a card. So the next stage is going to be uh, pairing a key. I'm going to use this fob. Um, so what we're going to do first of all is we're going to press the R button. So the beeps. And then we'll just tap this on the outside. So the beeps. And then... And that key should now work with that thing, uh, with the lock. So we can use that in a moment. Um, the next stage I'm going to do, and this is this is not something you have to do straight away, but just because I've got this top open here, um, and I'm going to be doing this in the next video, is I'm going to be putting in a uh, Z-Wave module too, which is basically to help it work with the smart home stuff. But I'm going to do that now, just because I've got this top open, and it's easier. So. Um, I'll put a link to these in the uh, in the comments below as well. Basically, this is a little zip wave that enables it to talk to smarter things, which is what we're going to be doing in the next video to make this a truly smart lock and not just a sort of keyless lock with an app. Um, so we just take this bit and just pop it in there if we can. There we go. And then that just registers that's gone in there. Then we just put the cover back on. 
and that is our lock in place. Now there is some stuff to do on the phone app, which I'm going to do in a minute, um, but basically your lock is now installed. Thanks very much for watching this video guys, I hope you enjoyed it and it's been useful. Uh, don't forget that in the next video we're going to be showing you how to install uh, the uh, or configure the Yale lock with the SmartThings hub and also put the interaction tiles. And then the final video is going to be going through some of the pros and the cons of the lock and some of the things that we've sort of been disappointed in. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, and if you've liked the video please like it. If you want to know about every time we get a new video then just press the bell icon. Um, if you've got any questions please put in the comments below. All the, all the stuff we've installed, so the lock and Z-Wave here and also the Smart Hub. We'll all put it. Yeah, I'll put some Amazon links in the in the description as well, so you can uh, you know where to find them. All right, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.